What's up, Upgraders? I hope you're having a great week. We are finished with week one. I hope you're enjoying alongside as much as I am. I really love digging into this book. Uh, we've got some important dates coming up. Next week on the 12th, we have our first uh, lunchtime live. We're going to talk about the upgrade. You can ask all your questions. You can email them to me, help at rebelparenting.org help at rebelparenting.org. We'll be live at facebook.com slash Dobson and facebook.com slash rebelparenting. Uh, that will be at 11.30 a.m. Pacific, 2.30 p.m. Eastern. Again, that's lunchtime live Q&A. Email your questions in. April 24th, Sarah Beckman will be on with us at the exact same time. How exciting. We're the only program that offers access to the authors. And me too but it's because it's my program. So this week, it's all about knowing your role. And there's some important reminders in there about knowing your place that will help you care for those in crisis more effectively. And so I'm going to read a little bit of this from the book. Um, and this is some questions you can ask yourself, and then we'll talk about the tiers that you might fall into. Um, so here's some questions you can ask yourself. Does this person consider me a close friend? Are they an extended or intimate family member? What is my day-to-day -day context in their life? Do I see them regularly? Are they part of a church family or in my church family? Do they have a family living in close proximity? Are their circumstances hindering my involvement? Those are some good questions to ask yourself, just generally as you're thinking about this person in crisis. And one of the things I'd like you to do during this month, if you don't have someone in crisis right now that you're trying to help, either think of someone you would like to or a situation in the past that you didn't maybe didn't know what to do. That will help you out through this month because you can think specifically where you can or could have helped and where you can or shouldn't help today. Uh, and then Sarah talks about these different tiers that people can fall into, uh, which will also help you care more effectively. Tier one, caregiver, family, or close friend. It's a really important one. Tier two, a friend, a neighbor, coworker, church member. You're on a team with that person. You share interests or hobbies or organizations. That's tier one and tier two. Tier three, acquaintances, friend or a family of a friend, knowledge by association. Tier four, in frequent interaction, don't know them personally, maybe you've never met. Once you have that down, then you can start to figure out what help is available to you? What would be something that would, can be considered normal and what would be considered out of the ordinary for you to help with? And then really, there's so much stuff online that you can get involved in. For Laura and I personally, um, we had, was it Giving Tree? Goodness gracious, I'm forgetting. I think it was Giving Tree. Uh, no, Meal Train. Mealtrain.com was what we signed up for. Uh, and my goodness, it was so, so helpful. Um, I could do updates, people could donate um, to help with house cleaning, things like that. Uh, there's just important things to know, especially when you fall into the different three or four category. When you bring food to someone that you don't know, um, maybe that's not the time to come inside the house and sit and visit with someone that's in crisis. Maybe you say, hey, I'm just going to leave it at the front door. It'll be in a cooler. Don't even worry. Tier one or two, ask. Maybe they do want company. Maybe they don't want company. And again, it's not about you. It's not about me. It's the designification of our stuff. I was writing that down in my notes tonight thinking about that. Also, this is a really important one to remember when we're talking about designifying ourselves or our situation because when you're trying to help someone in crisis, it's not about us. And that's a difficult one, especially in our culture, because in our culture, everything is about us. But you've got to remember, people in crisis often act very, very irrationally. They get irritable. They lash out at times. And I've been thinking, uh, I have a friend that we've been coaching. Her mom has schizophrenia. She's a paranoid schizophrenic. And she says terrible, terrible things. And here's the hard part. We both know her mom doesn't mean this. We both know this is a, a, a result of her sickness but it's still her mom and it still hurts even though rationally up here in our prefrontal cortex we know this isn't quote unquote real and what she's learning to do is to designify herself and her feelings to tell herself I know this isn't real and to choose to love the mom 
she knows her mom would be if she was in her right mind. This is such a huge concept. I, in fact, I started hearing about this from uh, a man. Uh, his wife suffered from dementia before she passed away. It was a few years of dementia. And the way he treated her, it was just so, it was so interesting. I just couldn't, I, I just had to ask him about it. And he said, oh, well, I know my wife loves me. She just can't express it right now. She's afraid and she's scared and she has anxiety. And so she lashes out, but that's not her. That's the sickness. And so he just treats her as if she has been behaving just like a model wife because it's his choice. It's his choice. Now he's so much deeper than I am. He's so much stronger than I am. He's got that designification piece down so much. I just think it would be so important for us to think about that as we read alongside to say, you know what? It's not about me. It's really not. I can tell you early on when Laura was diagnosed with cancer and in some of the early on treatments, I was not as compassionate as I now would try to be because I made it about me. I made it about my frustration or being me tired or how much I was extra doing, you know? Like, ooh, isn't it great that I'm doing so much more as my wife goes through chemotherapy, right? Like, oh my goodness, how crazy. That's why I love this book so much because it helps you in so many different areas of your life. You can designify yourself in so many ways in so many areas to try and be present, to not make it personally about us and to minister to another person. It's so much fun talking to you. Have an amazing weekend and I will see you Monday for week two of The Upgrade, talking about Alongside by author Sarah Beckman. God bless.